All right, thanks for watching. And in calculus, you study continuous functions. And you may wonder how many continuous functions are there in the world? Because if you watch one of my other videos, I showed that if you just have functions from R to R, there are a lot of functions from R to R. In fact, strictly more than the number of real numbers. But the cool thing is, it turns out for continuous functions, there are as many continuous functions as there are real numbers. In fact, what I want to show today is that the cardinality of the set of continuous functions from R to R equals to the cardinality of the real numbers. So, in some sense, calculus is easy. You're not studying more things than real numbers. And the way I'll do this is I'll use what's called the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem, which says to show that two sets have the same cardinality, all you need to do is find a one-to-one -one function from the real numbers to the continuous functions. So we need to show somehow r is included in the set of continuous functions from r to r, and that the set of continuous functions is in some sense included in the real numbers. In other words, to show that two infinite sets have the same cardinality, show this is less than or equal to this, and this is less than or equal to this. It's a non-trivial fact, but you know, it is true. And first of all, let's show that there are fewer real numbers than continuous functions, but that's not a big issue because if you have a real number, let's say C and R, then let's just let F be the function that's constant with constant value C. Constant value C. And yeah, it is a continuous function from R to R, right, so this is R to R, and this is, yeah, a continuous function from R to R, and in particular, if you start with two different real numbers, you do get two different continuous functions. So this is a one-to-one -one mapping from, uh, con from real numbers to continuous functions. So, and I hope you won't, you're not going to argue with that, you know, I think it's clear that there are definitely more continuous functions than real numbers. What is not that obvious is that there are, in some sense, more real numbers than continuous functions. Um, and the way we're going to show this is, uh, we're going to start with continuous functions and sort of find sets that have the equal cardinality and we'll show, oh, somehow the real number, one of them becomes the real numbers. So, because it turns out the continuous functions, uh, you can think of them as sequences of real numbers. So first of all, we can actually find an injection, a one-to-one -one map, from the set of continuous functions to sequences of real numbers. Why is that true? Because and this is very different from all the functions. And that's why all the functions, this doesn't work. You see, that's why in general there are more functions then there are real numbers. Uh, but because if you have two function, continuous functions that are equal on real, on, that are equal on rational numbers, then those two functions are equal. So first of all, one thing you need to know, the rational numbers are countable. So let, let's say Rn be an enumeration of the rational numbers and this sequence exists because uh, the rational numbers are countable uh, numbers and associate to this to any continuous function the following sequence namely f of 
all the rational numbers. So define the following function. So it goes from CR to those sequences. It associates to F the sequence F of Rn. That's from N if you want, from 1 to infinity. And I am claiming that this is one to one because suppose f of rn equals g of rn for all n. Well, then I'm claiming that f of x equals g of x, which would be enough because then f equals g. And then that would be that therefore it would be a one-to-one -one mapping. But look, if x is in R, then you know the rational numbers are dense, so we can find at least some sequence of rational numbers that converges to x. Then again, not necessarily the same sequence, but we know that uh, there are. xm rational numbers such that xm converges to x as m goes to infinity, but then what do we get? Well, consider f of xm. Because f is continuous, what does that mean? If a sequence converges to something else, f of that sequence converges to f of x. So this thing goes to f of x. But remember, we know by assumption that f and g are equal on rational numbers. So because the xm's, they're rational, this equals to g of xm. And letting m go to infinity, because g is continuous, this goes to g of x. And therefore, because limits are unique, at least in real numbers, uh, we get f of x equals g of x. And this is the crucial part. This is where we use continuity. In general, no, we really need all the real numbers to determine a function. But for continuous functions, you don't need all of them. You just need to know what they do on rational numbers or really any dense set that you want. Um, all right, so in other words, what have we shown? We've shown that there is a one-to-one -one map from continuous functions to sequences of real numbers. But, now as I said, we kind of want to show that um, this thing somehow gives you the cardinality of R because what is a sequence? It's really just a function from the natural numbers to the real numbers. So this whole set has the same cardinality as the functions from n to r. Because suppose you have a sequence, a given sequence from 1 to infinity, then you can just define a function f of n to be a n. Each one is a real number, so it is a function. I guess technically from n star to r, but that's fine. Just shift it and you get this. And here's the thing though. The real numbers, you can associate them with uh, binary expansions. So really, to every real number, you can more or less uniquely, although uh, up to a countable number of problems. Uh, you can associate them with sequences of binary digits. And so this R then just becomes a set of functions from N to functions from N to uh, it, the set zero one. one. I mean, if you want, technically, uh, 
because R has like two sides, it's a decimal sign and the integer sign, you can show R has the same cardinality as the interval 0, 1, and then given a real number from 0, 1, you can expand it as a binary number. So 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 1. Okay. Not quite uniquely, but as I said, uh, they're just countable number of exceptions. So it's fine. And technically also, yeah, if two sets have the same cardinality, the functions from n to those sets also have the same cardinality. And now, what is the cardinality of functions from n to functions of n to 0, 1? That's the same thing as the cardinality of the functions from n cross n to 0, 1. Simply because if you have, let's say, a sequence of functions, so if you have, let's say, a sequence of sequences, so for every m, it gives you a sequence fm n, well, that's the same thing as defining the function fm n gives you fm n. So basically, just put those two things here, and you do get that they're the same cardinality. Lastly, uh, n cross n, the interesting fact is, it seems it's way bigger than n, but it actually has the same cardinality of n, because if you think of it this way, you can literally parse through all the objects that way, like a snake, etc., etc. So this thing has the same cardinality, so this is just the same cardinality as the functions from n. 2, 0, 1. And notice we did uh, show, actually, sort of heuristically, that you can think of binary expansions as being like R. So those things have the same cardinality. So this is indeed, interestingly, the same cardinality as R. So using this chain of equivalences, we do get in other words, if you compose all those things, we in the end do get an injection from CR to R. And therefore, strictly speaking, this is less than or equal to R, and we've shown that R is less than or equal to this, and therefore we can conclude that they have the same cardinality. All right, I hope you like this little math extravaganza, and I hope you're enlightened now. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.